Hello, gentlemen. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay. Question number one for both of you. Wow, that's a difficult question to answer. I, I, the, the first thing was, I remember going into Dave Rawlings' uh, event, Two Days of the Sword, and uh, I didn't know anyone, and it was, a, it was in a pub, and uh, I was looking for the fencers in the pub, and then I saw a group of guys sitting like this, <laughs> talking with their hands, and I was like, those are the guys. <laughs> and it was, uh, it, was, it was so open those days, I think. You know, no one had to set their minds on anything in particular. So, um, so yeah, it was, a, you know, a great time, I think. Well, I was a noob. Um, actually, I started the whole sword fighting business um, with a couple of friends. We were uh, fighting on the streets with wooden clubs uh, wrapped with radiator foam. And uh, we didn't know what we were doing, we were just hitting each other. And one day the police came and they said, okay, you guys need to get off the street because you're disturbing the public peace or something. <laughs> um, but we didn't. And eventually um, things grew out to be much, much bigger than we'd ever dreamed. What I would say to myself is, don't change anything. <laughs> Just follow your dreams. That's what I'm doing right now. So uh, I think uh, I'm happy where things are. Oh. <laughs> Juval, you're such a nice guy. <laughs> Well, uh, first of all, the big difference is that we're not at school, per se. Um, you could see us more as a, as a band, and it, but instead of music, we hit each other in sorts. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so we, uh, we are more uh, focused on entertainment and, and, and the theatrical element. And we would l love to combine proper HEMA technique with entertainment to attain the public in that way. So that's why we're focused uh, towards live shows and film production. Uh, and that's how we would like to contribute to the whole spreading of the HEMA eventually. Lovely. The rock stars of HEMA. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, I think a lot of changed. First of all, you have to realize why we started with uh, focusing on tournaments. So if you, if you look back again to when we started, it was all very friendly and so on, but the, there was no test of anything. You could be the, the top guy just by having a lot of time to spend on the internet. So for me, the tournaments are a basic level, and I mean basic level, that's where you start to prove something and I'm not sure what it is that you prove and it might be different between different tournaments mm -hmm. uh, but we sort of have that in place and I'm, I'm sure that we'll see a lot of development you know in the years to come with the national uh, competitions and so on but for me and I think for a lot of, of competitive fighters uh, they're looking for, for more as well there's a different there's a layer on top of, of the, the basic tournament level mm -hmm. where uh, you're going back to to what made you start with HEMA, mm -hmm. and I think for a lot of people it was picking up a sword and going, ooh, you know, mm -hmm. wow, this, this sort of talk, talks to me and it speaks to me. And uh, uh, So for me, the, the competitive scene is a basic layer where you try a certain aspect of, of historical fighting, mm -hmm. but then there's another thing, and I think from that maybe has... Uh, I, I, maybe it hasn't changed, but I, I have a different emphasis now because I've been tournament fighting for since 2006. So, right. yeah. Thank I you. have a question for you in that yeah. regard, Anders. Can I interview as well? <laughs> sure, man. Yeah, okay. No problem. Um, Shoot. So, so the, 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 the Swedish team, you know, they're, they're always very... Uh, I like their team spirit and, and they seem to be very particular in their preparing customs. Uh, almost all of them have those earplugs in, yeah, and, and, and they're listening to something. Uh, I wonder what it is. It's Swedish yeah. folk music, <laughs> really. Yeah, it's the polka. If you, you, you know the polka? Sort of. Yeah, I, I know, ex especially Axel, he's got the warrior polka that he's, he always listens to. It's is time. that the key yeah. to your success? As I would Swedes? say it's probably 90%. Yeah. <laughs> I need to find myself some polka. 
You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Um, well, when, when we started going to historical fencing, uh, it was uh, through the teachings of Laurent Bernard, who is, uh, who is here at our summer course as every year. And his approach was always a bit more towards show fighting. He, he used uh, historical research to, to, to find the language of his mm -hmm. uh, choreographies. And that's how we started. And it's later on that we discovered that there is a thing as HEMA and that, that things are a bit more uh, geared towards sports and, and, and martial art training. Um, so we always had a kind of dream of one day uh, appearing on the, on the big screen. Hmm. Um, and and as, for, as for, the, for the historical research part, um, we, needed, yeah, we wanted something to legitimize uh, what we were selling in a way. So uh, our, our equipment and our gear had to be historically correct or at least uh, acceptable so we could uh, when we say okay this is historical martial arts every little detail uh, would fit when we would do a performance um, balancing all those elements is, is pretty hard I mean I always explain nor when people ask me what kind of group are you I say well you have three kinds of, of, of persons or three kinds of people who uh, work with historical martial arts uh, one, you have the reenactors, who you know they look really fine. They they they, they have their armor in, in tip-top shape, and and it's historically accurate. But um, their combat is is pretty. Uh, I would I wouldn't want to offend anyone, but it's limited to to basic movements because you are improvising in a way. Um, then you have the show fighters who really know how to put up spectacle and, and inspire people. Uh, but their moves isn't based on anything historical necessarily. Um, and then you have the HEMA people for, for whom it's, it's about to research the technique and the sport itself. And we in Nordevin try to combine all of this. Now that's a lot and that's, and that's why perhaps at this moment we don't have uh, leading people in tournaments uh, or rank, lead top ranking people in tournaments or or do the most historical research per se. Hmm. Um, but it's, it's a big challenge to combine all these elements. But you suddenly have the prettier girl, so you know, there's a payoff <laughs> somehow. Very good. The, the prettier man as well. Oh, obviously. He's, Yuval is definitely the prettiest boy in Himal. Yeah. Oh, ooh, there, there go our ratings through the roof. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think you've spoken to the wrong people. <laughs> uh, I, um, how do I answer that? Because we're not do it we're honestly. Just, yeah. Okay. So we're not that well liked. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think so. No. Well, at least not me. I'm. No. I, I have my fair share of, of haters. I believe. You haven't really? seen the fan pages. I haven't. I, have, I haven't got a fan page. No. I haven't got a jacket. It's, it's actually Axel, who's the the light guy. He's the one who. Yeah. All the love. The ladies love his button nose. Yeah. You know, he's got this cute little button nose. Whoa, yeah. wait, wait a second. Yeah. He appeared on the front of a magazine yes. the cover in a very, very alluring, likable way. If, if I were a girl, you know. I've been voted most well dressed man in HEMA a few times, yes. I think. I, I, th yeah, okay. What, what's that all about? Uh, well, I don't know. They just. I, you want the real story or you want a fake story? The fake story. I want, I want. I want the best story. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, um, they asked Axel and me, but uh, they felt I had better abs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's uh. the parental leaves tummy that's going. <laughs> no, it's pretty solid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you add the the knocking on wood? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm gonna put some sound effects <laughs> on that. that yeah. <laughs> doc, doc. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> um, about the gloves parts at Top Secret, I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to talk about it. They're very nice. They're, they are very nice, thank you. Um, no, actually Martin and I have, uh, have had a uh, business retreat 
as they call it, and we've talked about a lot of things. Um, and the only thing I can tell you right now, if things work out, and I think they will, uh, things are going to be pretty big in terms of equipment. Right. Um, that's all I'm going to say for now. Uh, as for the HEMA tournament manager, um, the team has had a couple of meetings recently and we've talked about exciting features. Um, I don't want to give away too much because you know it's still a lot, it's, everything is still um, uh, uh, done on a uh, no pay basis so mm. people have to find time and, um, and, and you know it's only the passion that drives us at the moment. Uh, but we are looking into um, making it a lot more user friendly. Uh, and finding a way to, uh, to distribute it uh, in the light version or in, a, uh, or in the more complex version like we will use a swordfish. Um, and we are looking at ways to make slow motion replays possible oh, cool. and that kind of stuff. And, and I think, you know, um, we're all working hard to, to bring HEMA to the next level. Um, and as a spectator sport, I think, uh, yeah, well, what, what GHFS has been doing with, with the life cost. It's amazing, it's going to reach a lot of people and especially if we could get those slow-mo replays mm. and, and, and see all those lightning moves in, in, you know, in full glory. Yeah, that would be awesome. Uh, I think that would draw a lot of people and, and, and show people what HEMA is all about. So, cool. uh, Is, is not a groin protector, it's a, it's, it's a peacock cock piece. <laughs> so it's uh, especially for you, you mom. Do, do I need it? Yeah, I think so. Aren't you circumcised? No. <laughs> <laughs> you need the extra flair. I thought we weren't going to talk about it. No, sorry, you can edit that out. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, so so everyone knows now that uh, Yuval is edited. Uh, edited? <laughs> In certain ways. <laughs> That's uh, not what, they, what my rabbi calls it. <laughs> okay, what was the question? The question. <laughs> <laughs> what can you tell us about the, the GHFS instructor guide and, and why did you decide to share it with the community? Oh yeah, that was the question. <laughs> I, focused on the, I, I focused on the crotch here. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't? Sorry, but yeah, doesn't. Uh, yes, uh, well, uh, here's the deal. If you want to create any type of instructions you have to uh, or a good place to train you have to sort of figure out a few basic things how to create stability and how to progress uh, you know and, and, and everything so you, doing that uh, requires that you have some sort of system and a method uh, uh, and I realized that I think quite earlier on from from starting, when I started to teach and when I founded the club in 2003 so so the, the, the guide was my way first in Swedish for the, the instructors to sort of put down in words how we should train and what we should do. It doesn't necessarily mean that we follow it, hmm. you know, in every aspect of everything, but it, it, it is a sort of a, a guide. It's a way of training new instructors and everything and that, bu that builds new, that builds, uh, new, gives you new blood in the, in the organization. And I felt that, you know, it had to be, it, I wanted to do that for the rest of the community as well because uh, it's hard to start a new club and there's no need for everyone to go through the same mm. growing pains that we did. Yeah. So that was uh, that was the reason for sharing. And that's um, the reason for sharing uh, in general. I think. So. Will, you, will your guide include uh, a section on how to do those really really sexy flourishes? <laughs> you've been you have it, I, it's already out there. You haven't read my guide? You haven't read the guide? No. If you did, maybe you'd do better in competitions. <laughs> have, you, have you thought about that? Uh, you will, it will be linked in this YouTube video. Uh, so <laughs> you can click on the link. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> well, you, you'll be here for a couple of days, so maybe yeah, you can uh, show me some Yeah, but there will be a new version uh, with uh, how to do a sexy flourish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I'm waiting for it, man. <laughs> Anxiously. And this Leonard Prots piece. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I, I, I have a serious answer to that, which sort of connects to the crotch pieces. 
<laughs> no, but seriously, I think that um, I'm, I might offend Yuval here now, but I, I don't think I will. Yeah, I, I've already gone through the worst. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm yeah, no, level. no, there's, um, I mean, uh, when we started off, we, we keep going back to the, the beginning, but when we started off, uh, when Hema sort of hit it off and, and it grew it's, you know, really quickly, uh, there were a lot of people from different types of environments. And all of them brought their identities from other, uh, you know, reenactment and, and LARP and whatever they were doing, mm. uh, Society of Creative Anachronism and so on. Uh, they brought that in identity into HEMA. Uh, I think that we will see a, a sort of um, the old, uh, a HEMA that has the, its own identity that's connected to the actual fencing and the arts that we're that we're studying. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the you know the the things that have been sort of the identity so far that's been specifically HEMA has often been and I'm going to offend more people now <laughs> like wearing kilts and metal t-shirts which has which has a, it's an identity of its own but it's sort of it has nothing to do with fencing you know <laughs> so I think that we're going to see another uh, another identity emerging uh, style wise and, and and also you know when it comes to how we study and what we do and, and how we do things differently from from one other and I, I think there's there's room for what Yuval is doing which is great in there but it's I think he, Hima needs it's yeah I, I acknowledge your work that's what I'm saying <laughs> well you're the Pope of Hima I am that's a new so, title. So I was called the, 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 the Mexican Jesus by Matt Gallus. <laughs> so now I'm the Pope and Jesus. Yeah, man. Have it. Yeah. Th yes. Thanks. Thanks for giving us this space. Yes. Uh, anyway, uh, I have a kind of serious thing to say too. Um, I hope the painted masks stay because I really like them. Okay. You agree? Would you allow them? In yeah. your Let me say this. I, I <laughs> in, your my pa them. in my papacy. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I will never disallow anything uh, if it's not da unless it's dangerous. But it's uh, let me phrase it like this: I've never worn uh, a painted mask. Why not? Uh, because I, I don't. I have no. I have no skills. I, I have no. Sk I have no painting skills. <laughs> but you will see me in a in a peacock codpiece fairly soon. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think, uh, no, okay, maybe one last thing. Okay. Um, the exciting part about HEMA for me at this moment is, you know, it's kind of underground mm. and, and you're, you're creating this whole subculture and now it's all, it's all cool in this way, but um, things are going to change. And, and the, the, the moment HEMA is, is going to become mainstream, I mean, that's going to be a, like this, this video probably completely. is going to break it. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, the video is going to do the trick. No, I, mean, I, 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 I like to, to go into the street, go into clubs and tell girls like, you know, I'm, I'm a sword fighter, you know, oh. and, you know, because they don't know what HEMA is. Yeah, but can, not, can you, and can then you do some <laughs> lines for me right here, right now? Can you just pretend I'm the girl at the bar. Can you just can you do your, give me your magic? You is well? it, isn't sword fighting a gay euphemism though? It is. Um, oh, okay. Well, that's why it works well with girls because they don't feel threatened. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> I've had that problem often. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but, but seriously, um, uh, it's going to be a completely different time when you walk to a person in the street and say, uh, "Oh, I'm historical fencing." Oh, yeah, I know that. Hmm. And um, it's, it's going to come. And uh, I think I, uh, I think we all have our parts to play, uh, GHFS and Anders Lindner, by promoting tournaments, and and I hope Nordvin by. Uh, putting it out on the big screen, and uh, that's why we kind of opposites of the spectre. Are we? Are we? Well, you know, I dabble into tournament, but uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah <maybe. laughs> two sides of the same coin, perhaps. Yeah. 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 I was just, I was, I, who's the light side and who's the dark side? I, I want to be the dark side. Can I be the? You were you on Meg's? Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, this is the money shot, ladies. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, wait, what? Were you you were in in the Meg's uh, cards, right? Uh, were you a hero or a villain? Uh, no, no, I'm not yet. Actually. Oh, really? I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I hope Meg. You're not made. Come on, yet. Meg. You haven't made it. What are you waiting for? Yeah. <laughs> you, you haven't made it yet. No. no. Well, yeah, I think this so this this will change everything. All right. Can well, you edit out his tears. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it's done already. <laughs> Alrighty then. Well, thank you very much both for uh, your time and uh, thanks for your cooperation. Thank you. Thank All you right. Guys. Cheers, guys.